At exactly 3.25 p.m., a Russian soldier emerged from his trench and surveyed the area. He was unaware that he was being watched. The sounds of friendly artillery, explosions, and gunfire nearby gave him confidence. This shelter had protected him and 17 of his comrades from enemy attacks many times. But he had no idea what was about to happen. The daytime artillery fire had sufficiently camouflaged the Azov regiment's drone on the hilltop. But this was no ordinary drone attack. There was something completely new in the middle. Something the Russian soldiers had never seen before. It was a predator silently advancing along the forest path. And in a moment, an entire Russian unit would do the unthinkable. The Azov regiment had been watching the Russian fortified line on the ground for 17 days without moving. As for weapons, there were no anti-tank missiles or machine guns. The scene belonged entirely to a swarm of Rattel s ground robots with carbon Kevlar-covered bodies and five HD optical cameras and a Mavic 3T, a shapeless threat with its dark stone-colored compact armor and an electronic brain as light as a butterfly's wing, was advancing toward the trench line, tracked by the Rattel SV 1.3 operating system. The 17 Russian soldiers in the trench had no idea what was happening, because in their combat logic, the entire see, aim, fire sequence required them to imagine the enemy as a human silhouette. At that moment, two Mavic 3T drones were busy closing the loitering circle. The Mavic Swarm was tasked with determining coordinates and the number of Russian soldiers. The first Mavic climbed to an altitude of 70 meters and passed over the tree line with its night vision camera. Two hot spots, i.e. underground shelter vents, immediately caught the eye in the thermal image. The second Mavic approached from the north and cross-checked the points. The silhouette of a guard smoking next to the vent was observed. It appeared that the guard was not on high alert. The operator detected a PKT machine gun and thermal scope in a sandbag nest. The Mavic safely ascended without triggering a low signal alarm and were put into loiter mode. The target coordinates were loaded onto the main heroes of the operation. The first FPV drone reached a speed of 120 km per hour and dove toward the northern chimney from an altitude of 35 meters. Approximately 1 kg of explosives struck the manhole directly. The internal blast pressure ripped the metal inner door of the shelter from its hinges. The second FPV headed for the sandbag trench to the south. The explosion destroyed the machine gun emplacement. The interval between the two explosions was kept short to prevent those inside from extinguishing the fire or preparing counterfire. The explosions caused panic in the trench line. No one escaped. Everyone was inside. From that moment on, the Russian troops would do the unthinkable in the face of something they had never seen before. A knee-high, armored, tracked shadow began to advance in front of the trench line. The prototype ground robot Rattel S was loaded with 21 kilograms of high explosives. The carbon Kevlar armor on the robot's roof was resistant to light automatic rifle fire. The main explosive was under the body. The secondary load was at the front with a magnetic lock. The Rattel S slowed to walking pace, its track teeth crushing gravel without a sound, while the laser lighter on the sensor mast scanned the sandbag wall at the base with the precision of a jeweler's ruler. The robot stopped in front of the target shelter. The height of the steps, the entrance sill, the door leaf, the rusty hook, everything fell into place with millimeter precision on the instantaneous 3D map. Then the speaker emitted a mechanical coldness that was difficult to describe in Russian, compressing the high-low frequency balance into a single sentence, surrender or be destroyed. The concrete walls of the bunker repelled the sound wave. The message was repeated every 15 seconds. There was silence in the shelter. One of the soldiers inside reflexively touched the safety catch, but couldn't reach the trigger because there was no one in front of it. No shoulder line formed by slight vibrations was visible in the sight. The silhouetteless target was like a black fog that deprived the brain of rational defense. The robot stabilized its position, increased the tension on its tracks, and moved into a sitting position. At that moment, only the buzzing of surveillance drones circling in the sky and the motionless mechanical death facing them could be heard. When there was no sound from inside, the commander moved on to the second stage. 
Rattel S activated its payload, the front magnetic lock clicked open, and the 8kg secondary RDX package was placed against the bottom of the sandbag wall with a smooth embrace. As the explosive sensor counted down from 5, some of the soldiers in the trench forgot to breathe, while others thought for the first time about riddling a loudspeaker with bullets. The explosion shattered the sandbag wall and the entrance steps of the shelter, causing a partial collapse. The dust cloud rose 4 to 5 meters. Before the dust cloud settled, the Rattel S speaker activated a second time. At that moment, thanks to the post-explosion pressure vacuum, a thin, dirt-covered piece of cardboard floated out of the door like a membrane. Mavic's RGB sensor captured the paper, framed it, and as the smoke cleared, the Mavic camera spotted the piece of cardboard coming out of the entrance. There was writing on it. We want to surrender. Those inside wanted to live. The operator's fingers hovered over the keyboard because the protocol had been written to handle everything from this point on without human intervention. The Mavic camera detected the first Russian soldier with his hands in the air. The drone activated the LED array around the lens, and a green and red strobe began flashing at a rate of 1 hertz. Invisible light steps on the ground drew a digital corridor for those who were to surrender to walk through. The Russian soldier, unarmed and with his hands in the air, slowly emerged from the rubble. The thermal camera clearly recorded his body language. The drone gave a follow and track signal with a stroboscopic green and red light. The soldier who surrendered walked into the safe corridor, guided by this light. Another followed. Then three more. The drone used light signals to direct those who surrendered to the safe area. No one greeted them. They only knew they were under observation. Within minutes, Ukrainian infantry entered the positions. Three security infantrymen from the Azak NC-13 team received orders to move forward. With their weapons on their shoulders and their barrels pointing down, they walked forward. There was not a single bullet casing on the ground. The Rattel S waited at the entrance until the surrender was complete. It did not have to use its 21 kilograms of explosives. The soldiers searched the Russian prisoners before handcuffing them with plastic restraints. A total of four pistols, three AK-74s, two hand grenades, and seven cell phones were collected. The interior of the shelter was searched with a flashlight, dry food, ammunition boxes, two handheld radios, and air filter equipment were found. The captured Russian soldiers had ensured that this area was cleared without any casualties for the first time since the failed Ternova operations. Only drones, reconnaissance systems, and a walking ground robot. In just 17 minutes. During the operation, a Rattel S worth $44,000 and a total of only $55,000 were captured or liquidated, along with 17 Russian soldiers. In a statement following the operation, the Azak Regiment announced that they had achieved the first case in modern warfare history in which unmanned land and air systems captured enemy positions and secured their surrender without any human intervention. We need to take a closer look at the main hero of this operation, which caused an earthquake on the Russian side. The Rattel S is the newest member of Ukraine's family of ground unmanned systems, which has not yet been given a name. Befitting the name Rattel, it is small, stubborn, and unexpectedly fierce. Its body is 95 centimeters long, 60 centimeters wide, and 55 centimeters high when the sensor mast is closed. These dimensions make the vehicle compact enough to be loaded and unloaded with one hand into a pickup truck bed. The vehicle is equipped with a dual composite track system. This system is equipped with a rubber steel cord structure and significantly reduces the risk of breakage compared to rubber-wheeled unmanned ground vehicles, especially on obstacles such as crags or sharp debris. The propulsion system is electric hybrid, with two brushless motors connected to a lithium iron phosphate battery. This system allows speeds of up to 7 km per hour in silent mode, and up to 15 km per hour in high-volume sprint mode. The vehicle's operational range varies between 8 and 10 kilometers depending on terrain conditions, with a cycle time of 4 to 5 hours for tasks involving movement and waiting cycles. The vehicle has a carrying capacity of up to 25 kilograms on a standard load plate. In attack configuration, 
it carries approximately 20 to 22 kilograms of TNT equivalent explosives and operates with a dual effect firing system in an upward and downward direction. This system can be activated by operator command or by the robot's own sensors. The mine clearance kit includes a front scanner, a light pressure strip, and approximately 5 kilograms of explosives. The logistics package module includes a front camera and a soft carrying bag that can carry 15 kilograms of ammunition or first aid supplies. It is equipped with a 15-watt speaker as an announcement and psychological effect kit. In this system, delivery calls recorded in Russian, Ukrainian, and English, as well as warning sounds such as Area is Mined, are pre-loaded and activated. The Rattel S ground robot is used for multiple purposes in various combat scenarios. In trench assault missions, the Rattel S typically enters the fray after FPV drones have carried out frontal explosions. Using its audio delivery call system, it psychologically pressures the enemy and, if necessary, destroys shelters or building entrances with its explosive payload. In ammunition transport missions, it carries ammunition boxes or medical supplies to advancing units on the front line. On its return route, it can pull wounded personnel to a safe area using a hook attached to its body. In minefield clearance missions, it creates a safe passage corridor by triggering mines in a controlled manner using its light pressure plate. In urban reconnaissance operations, it can enter narrow streets, building entrances and basements. Thanks to its raised optical mast, it can conduct reconnaissance in blind spots where people hesitate to enter. The Rattel S replicates the Approach, Break, Suppress, Retreat set of tasks performed by expensive armored vehicles on the front lines with a package costing tens of thousands of dollars. While reducing the risk of human casualties to zero, it offers the enemy, who is likely to surrender, the option of kneel down, survive, instead of run, shoot, die. This means both moral superiority and intelligence gains. Moreover, being able to transport the entire system in a pickup truck dramatically increases operational flexibility. The Rattel S is cheap, quiet, annoying, and deadly when necessary. It is currently the most up-to-date prototype that embodies the concept of small but troublesome on the front lines. Moreover, the incident in Kharkiv is not an isolated example. Ukraine is stepping up its attacks using unmanned systems. Kiev has announced plans to deploy 15,000 ground robots. Ukraine's innovation ecosystem is putting technology into use before Russia's industrial system can copy, standardize, and scale it up. Among the countries closely following this concept are the US, China, Israel, and Russia. If these tactics become widespread, algorithms will soon be making decisions. Who will be targeted? Who will be spared? Who will be taken prisoner? The drone armies that military theorists have been talking about for years are no longer fiction, but reality. Moreover, they are not only useful, but have also ushered in a new era. Now, Russia must prepare for a world where the first thing you hear on the battlefield is the buzz of a drone, and the last thing you see is a ground robot advancing toward your shelter. The future is not at the door, it is already here. We look forward to your comments below. Like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications because the next story is already loading and you may be the first to hear the first crackle on the radar. Thank you for watching.